Hayabusa, 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 Hayabusa. Dank Nooner, Dank Nooner, Dank Nooner, Dank Nooner, Dank Nooner. Hayabusa. YouTube commenters, Yammy, where's the Hayabusa? Yammy, Gen 3 Busa, Yammy, be my dad, Yammy, this, Yammy, that, talking about Hayabusas every day on YouTube. Guys, here it is, a Gen 3 Hayabusa. It's taken us a little bit of time because we don't have any connects over at Suzuki to get our grubby little mitts on a Gen 3 Busa, but here we have it. And today we're going to see if it lives up to the generational legend that is the Gen 1 Hayabusa. But Yami, where's the Turbo Busa? Tur turbo Busa? Turbo? You want to talk to me about a Turbo Busa? Well, why don't we have a Turbo Busa, right? Look down below. Are we at a million subscribers? Can we possibly do a Turbo Hayabusa when we're not at a million? I've been telling you guys for every freaking video to subscribe, to do a Turbo Hayabusa. I'm over here trying to do my job, trying to show you guys that we can do a Turbo Busa. It's ridiculous. Hayabusa, 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 Hayabusa. Dank Nooner, Dank Nooner, Dank Nooner, Dank Nooner, Dank Nooner. Busa boys, are you tired of not getting the love you deserve? Is there a Gen 3 Hayabusa shaped hole in your heart that just can't be filled? Manscaped can provide the answer. The discerning Hayabusa man would always choose a Gen 3 Hayabusa. With its supple looks, luscious curves, and infinite torque curve, it's simply the best motorcycling experience one can have. A perfect pairing for this elevated taste is the Manscaped Lawnmower 4.0, an all new body wash for when you need to smell and look fresh for the homies. Right now, you click yourself that link down below and get started with the most Hayabusa adjacent man grooming tools this side of the Mississippi. Hayabusa men get 20% off their order by simply clicking that link down below. The new refined body wash is a perfect match for this refined Hayabusa. Don't delay, get yourself trimmed up for the Busa boys today. Manscaped, it's for Hayabusa men. Now getting things back on the rails here with the 2022 Hayabusa, this motorcycle has a 1340cc inline fork revised for this new generation making 188 horsepower and a biblical 111 foot-pounds of torque. It is a heavy bike at 582 pounds, but it does have a ton of technology in it for the first time in the Boosa's history. You've got awesome brakes, ABS, traction control, wheelie mode, power modes, all sorts of crazy gizmos and whiz-bang features that you would want on a motorcycle that costs $20,000. It's finally got an up and down quick shifter, which I mean, the boost has been begging for for years. And finally, one thing we gotta mention is new for 2022, a bold suite of new graphics for this motorcycle right here. Now let's wait. Get the hell out of my way. Oh. People are sick about your dirt shit. I mean, gotta we gotta the bike. We gotta Throw get the boost boys out there, baby. Okay, all right. Sick all this nerd stuff. There he goes, guys. There he goes. Friggin' nerds! All right, guys. I'm taking this Hayabusa out for my very first time riding this motorcycle around because, as y'all know, I'm a Hayabusa aficionado. I love these things. They're so cool. <laughs> Who doesn't love this much power and torque? out of their open class super bikes. It's pretty freaking wicked. Now, again, this is my very first time riding this motorcycle. I have not ridden it before. Got plenty of experience on my own Gen 1 Busa that I own. It's been recently turboed, but y'all can't see that video yet. And I gotta say, this thing gives me a lot of the same feelings that my Gen 1 Busa gives me. And I was so worried when this bike came out that it wouldn't have the spirit of the Hayabusa, but immediately upon taking off with it, man, this feels like a Hayabusa. One thing I love over a Gen 1 are these mirrors. They're so much more aero, so much smaller than a Gen 1. This view out of the dash here is so cool, dude. Got the double analog sweeping needles right here. This is a really, really cool place to sit. 
Now, this is my very first impression ride on this motorcycle. You guys know we're gonna get this bad boy out on the highway, see what it can do when it's unleashed because honestly, a lot of the Hayabusa videos we've been watching, it's like people treating it like it's some big gentlemanly sport touring bike. This is a friggin' Busa. It's designed to do one thing and one thing only, and that is go really fast in a straight line. Now, one area that this Hayabusa has improved dramatically over the Gen 1 and possibly the Gen 2 as well is that this motorcycle actually feels like a normal freaking motorcycle now, which is a big deal for a Hayabusa. Normally, these things, uh, you know, the Gen 1 specifically, it's so kind of heavy and low and fat. You didn't really feel like you wanted to carve up any corners with it, but this thing, oh man, I actually get a really good feel for the front end on this bike. Feels really, really good on the side of the tire, way more than it has any right to. And I just feel like I have this biblical amount of power underneath me, which is so cool. It still has that whine of a Hayabusa from the engine. <laughs> And you open up the gas and it reminds you that it's 1340 cc's of unbridled fury. Now a lot of people, myself included, were kind of disappointed with the Gen 3 Busa because it kind of failed to live up to the spirit of the original Busa. It's meant to be this top end, top speed monster and we were all kind of hoping for something in the 240, 250 horsepower vicinity from Suzuki. I think we were all a little bit disappointed. And when I say we, I mean the collective Busa boys of the internet. We're all a little disappointed that Suzuki's given us this kind of less top end horsepower, more torque rich engine. But I gotta say from the cockpit here, it still retains a lot of the Busa flavor and characteristics. And it's still a really comfortable, really amazing motorcycle to ride. And you really feel like it's just really fast. <laughs> Anywhere you squeeze the gas, you are taken off into space with this bad boy. And that is the feeling of a Hayabusa. Man, can we get kind of low here with the Busa? That's kind of cool. <laughs> it still does the Busa thing. That is so great. You know, leader bikes really don't feel like that because this thing from about 4,000 RPM, you twist the throttle and it's just this effortless speed, effortless power and torque out of this thing. Um, in a way that, you know, if you've only ever ridden 1,000cc bikes, you don't really understand what these bigger open class bikes are all about. They're, they're pretty crazy, man. Um, they are not for the faint of heart, that's for sure. Wow, this is such a great experience on this bike. there's the reason why a boost is really not a beginner bike because it completely distorts your sense of speed um, you get on it and you don't really notice how fast you're going which can be very dangerous for beginner riders uh, this is not a motorcycle that uh, a beginner should pilot unless it has a turbo on it that way you can grow into it and you can know when the turbo is about to spool you're not going to be you know ripping off the rev limiter because you got to keep it under the turbo spool rate that's why we always say a turbo hayabusa is the best beginner bike to get my dude obviously i think the addition of an up down quick shifter is a great feature on this motorcycle as i come into this corner here you can just grab a gear down no problem just bang it down grab a gear up if i need to right here mid corner uh, this suzuki quick shifter system works really really well i like it uh i've definitely felt clunkier quick shifters and I have felt a little bit better quick shifters on the down blips, but that's okay. It's not designed to be the most sporty thing in the world, you know? Man, this is a pretty fantastic riding experience. This, this feels really premium over a, uh, a Gen 1 Busa. And I just, I'm shocked at how much of the spirit they kept in this bike. And again, yeah, it's the same frame, same swing arm. I was looking at it from the side and it looks exactly like my Gen 1 Busa, except the engine's been pretty heavily reworked over the years. But, uh... You know, this is definitely an evolutionary, not a revolutionary motorcycle. Ergonomically, this Hayabusa still fits that kind of sport touring, open class superbike feel. It doesn't feel like a, you know, uh, leader bike or like the uh, Fireblade or anything like that. I'm actually really comfortable on this thing. It sits a lot like a uh, an RS660 or kind of like an early 2000s sport bike. You know what I mean? Like it just is a little bit more comfortable 
a little bit more relaxed to ride which I, I really appreciate honestly maybe I'm just getting old but I don't really want to ride around something like the Fireblade on the daily now the thing you notice on the bike is the hoofed the boost is not known for being a light petite motorcycle and this one certainly is not light or petite tipping the scales at 599 pounds or something like that 589 uh, it's it's a pretty large and in charge beast of a bike that's why they're really popular with football players and NBA players back in the early 2000s a lot of guys bought these bikes because they actually fit on them whereas I don't really fit on this bike <laughs> the, the speed and the way it makes its power nothing's like a Hayabusa man I mean <laughs> that's so cool oh man what a sweet ride Suzuki at it again man what are you gonna do they're always out there as I mentioned evolutionary over revolutionary this thing is so much a a buttoned up very refined and iterated upon version of that same formula that same recipe that made the first generation Hayabusa such a smash hit with people like there's a reason why these things have a cult following it's not just me being silly on the internet about them uh, these things have a cult following for a reason they're really cool motorcycles that fit a very particular need for a lot of people and even through these kind of light sweepers these kind of twistier roads here uh, this is such a fun motorcycle and rewarding motorcycle to ride in a way that I really did not expect it to be my gen 1 Busa especially now that it's been turboed definitely isn't this rewarding and fun to ride around some roads like this uh, it's become an absolute highway monster but you guys will have to subscribe if you want to see that video because it is not out yet gotta hit that 1 million we're hoping that with the gen 3 Busa we could hit a million that'd be pretty sweet one question I have for you guys, and I'm curious to hear y'all's opinion on this. Do you think we should do this as an expert bike? I know I certainly would have fun with the Gen 3 Busa, but uh, I don't know if that many people are interested in these bikes other than dedicated and committed Hayabusa men, you know? I think it takes, uh, I think it takes a very specific clientele for this motorcycle, you know? It's definitely not for everybody, but weirdly enough, it has mass appeal because so many people know it as the king of speed, the benchmark bike, the Suzuki Hayabusa. It's the most legendary motorcycle name in all of history, possibly, and that's for good reason. Now, I've jibber-jabbered and waxed poetic about this motorcycle enough. I want to get this thing out with spite. I want to rip it on the highway. I want to see how this thing performs and if it still is a top speed monster like the original Gen 1 Hayabusa was. So let's do that. Um... And uh, here I am loving this motorcycle. It is so much fun. Yeah, I mean, I think whenever a bike is that good, we're more than happy to eat crow about it and be like, you know what, we called it wrong. Gen 3 Busa is awesome Busa. Um, it's so good. Yeah, I, it's, it's such a fun motorcycle. I think the best part about it, honestly, is just how much torque it has like that's really the name of the game on this motorcycle yeah it's got 188 horsepower but the low to mid range where you're actually riding around on the street that's where the fun is on this bike yeah it's like Suzuki realized that most of their customer base doesn't really take the bike out to redline and it's kind of freaking hard to take a boost out to redline in most of these 50 states that we have here right <laughs> like it's pretty difficult to ring out a busa um and so suzuki was like well screw it let's just make the engine tractable for everyday use and give you more meat where you want it right yeah and they nailed that it it's really got, feels so much meatier than a gen one it's got so between uh like 3000 and 7000 rpm man it's it's a dream it's got it's, so much power it's one of the torquiest bikes i've ever felt in that mid-range yeah no and doubt like the yeah the super duke is what like 106 foot pounds of torque or something like that it doesn't feel the same the thing is is it's so easy because the wheelbase is so short and that bike's so light it's so easy for it to just like rip the wheel off the ground yeah this thing puts down all that power 
and it's just it's unbelievable how usable it made 111 foot pounds yeah it's kind of disgusting how you can just get along with that bike on the everyday you know oh bye Oh man, it's so much fun. <laughs> yeah, you really can live with this Busa. And let's do a little, let's do a little fourth gear roll on for this this here normal normal 800 cc naked bike <laughs> versus that fucking Busa. <laughs> All right, let's do it. One, two. I mean, where was your Bosa? Uh, that wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> I, I thought think... it was supposed to be world endingly fast. What happened? Oh man, let's do it from second gear. Okay, I'll get obliterated, yeah. <laughs> I really thought you'd take me in fourth gear. That's where I, I what? Yeah, me t uh, maybe I just didn't give it enough gas. Were you, were you not wide open? I thought I was wide open. <laughs> maybe there's just more Bosa mode somewhere. All right see if we get an opening here you want to do second gear yep okay from uh, what about 45 or so yeah two one man that mv is quick Where's your boost, dog? Come on, man! You're supposed to prove on the boost is the fastest thing on the road. <laughs> I will say, once you start burying this boost, it it just fucking builds speed, and yeah, it's like that's true. more, more, more the whole time. Yeah, it'll just keep pulling all the way till it's 186 mile per hour like speed limit, basically. Um, yeah. Okay, so those results, we, we did not plan that. Uh, we I, that, I didn't think that would happen. This is the second day in a row we've had unexpected results. <laughs> Very unexpected results, I'd say. I guess this MV is really goddamn fast. I thought it was like 130 horsepower, so I didn't think it'd be like rocket ship fast. <laughs> no, that, that was, okay. <laughs> that was second gear until the end of fourth, I think, or midway through fifth. Yeah, I was just holding the bike wide open. Wait, we're supposed to say the boost is the king of the road. What? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what now? <laughs> I have no idea. Well, uh, the boost is still really fun to ride, I guess. <laughs> well, maybe, well, damn it. Well, now I think we have to say that maybe, you know, that's okay. Listen, all right. <laughs> Back in the day when the Gen 1 came out, nothing could touch it, right? Yep. Now the Gen 3 Busa, apparently a middleweight naked bike is faster than it. <laughs> or what as fast. Or as fast, right? So that, that means a leader bike would just fucking clobber that bike. And we suspected that, and that's why we didn't bring out the blade, because we didn't want to embarrass the Hayabusa, because we knew the blade would just super skywalk it, oh, right? Oh, yeah, it would. <laughs> all that being said, though, and all those drag races being done, that boost is still a great riding experience, man. Oh, and the, the, the sensation of speed is real. I mean, I felt when I was riding that bike, like it was way faster than this MV. Oh, way yeah. faster. Like, just Like, that, look at right, that. Right there, that feels so good and so meaty. Yeah. Like, just the mid-range punch on this motorcycle is, is biblical. Yeah. And it still has the spirit of the Hayabusa, still feels really, really good to ride. We still love it, man. And so, with all that being said, let's wrap up this video, get our final thoughts on this Hayabusa. Let's do it. Thought we were done. <laughs> we thought we were wrapping up this video. We're not, we're not done. We're going about 60. Yep. Let me know when. One, two, three. That's, that's not, that's not right. That's right there. So the Busa can't, can't even walk away in MV a good three or four seconds into the power there. Yeah, let, let's do it again in like sixth gear. Okay, sixth that, gear. Like, 
That's where all of my torque should be, yeah, right? Yeah, I've got, I've got no power in sixth, right? So we're going yep. 60, so let me know when. All right, one, two, three. No! I, I'm actually passing you now. No! <laughs> like, I, I, get, I gave up because you were leaving me behind, but you were starting to fucking walk on the Hayabusa. <laughs> no! <laughs> on a naked bike with like 140 horsepower. Oh man, that's that's not good, guys. That's really not what you you spent. Imagine you spent twenty thousand dollars on an open class superbike from Suzuki, and you get waffle stopped by an MV Agusta with like 140 horsepower. I'm so just flabbergasted by that. Yeah. So like, I mean, sixth the, gear. The six gear should, roll on, dude. I mean, goddamn. I you should have nothing for me in sixth gear. Yeah. Nothing. And yet, I had everything. I was actually pulling away. <laughs> it's it's unbelievable. Let's let's try third gear. I mean, shit. We got. I mean, we have to try all the revs here. This is ridiculous. All right, I'm in third. Two, one. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Why were you there with me the whole time? You couldn't do any like you would think that you would just leave me, right? But you you don't. Yeah. Like this is supposed to be the king of the highway, the land speed missile. Yeah. Anybody we're, we're walks literally up. Literally on the toll road right now. I'm on a naked bike. Yeah. You should. I should be like you roll up next to me and you flex, and then I just open the throttle and leave you, and yeah. then you're sitting there trying to chase me down through all your gears and you got nothing. Yeah. That, that's that's not... the opposite of what happened. Yeah, that was embarrassing for the Hayabusa. I mean, we just did third gear roll on to about uh, triple digits. We're not going to say how fast. Um, sixth gear roll on, fourth gear roll on. I mean, literally everywhere in the real world, I'm pulling ahead of you. <laughs> Unless I, we somehow find a place where you can do 160 miles an hour, you're never going to beat this bike. No. Which is absolutely crazy. <laughs> what happened, Suzuki? What happened? Gen 1 Busa's best Busa! Yes! Oh, man. Like, that was... I was I was really... we Like, we filmed the outro before this. We were like, oh, yeah, it's a great bike. It's a ton of fun. And then that happened. Spite, do you know what this means? Does that mean we were right? No, number one, we were right. But number two, we're finally going to defeat all the idiots who had the Ducati versus Suzuki video from RevZilla. We're, we're going to do it. This is going to negate all that energy. <laughs> this is it. Finally. <laughs> We've broken the curse. We've broken oh, the man. curse. We're going to put those Jixxer boys back in their place. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> oh, thank you, MB. Thank you, Eurocycles. Thank you, Chris, if you're watching this video. <laughs> we did it. We did it. This isn't even the fastest MV. It's a friggin' naked bike, and we just absolutely stopped the Busa. Wow. I kind of okay. I kind of want to try again, but I'm like, why? I've already, I feel like I've kicked the Busa when it's down, you know? Th this this is truly a, a mind-bending result. I think we need to go back to the shop and reevaluate everything about this video. Yes, absolutely. Let's go Gotta, do it. Spite, what can we say? I, uh, I, <laughs> I'm kind of out of words, honestly, at this point. Um, Guys, the boost is slow. It's, it's really slow. It's slow. <laughs> and we don't really know what else to say about it. And you guys might think that we're just kind of hamming it up for the video, but we probably did 12 roll races with the MV Agusta. And in every single roll race, that MV was either right there or going faster than the Busa, especially in the sixth gear one, which really hurt as I pulled away from yeah. it. I looked back, I was like, oh, sorry, Spite. That was, oh man. <laughs> like the, the Busa is the highway monster, right? It's supposed to be it's the supposed, apex predator. It's the roll race king. And it couldn't beat a naked bike? Couldn't beat a naked bike. Granted, it's a very spicy naked bike. We've got some numbers we're gonna take a look at here in a little bit, but that should not have happened. Mm -mm. Should not have happened. 
and it really shows you guys why we also chose to not bring the fire blade along in today's video because we kind of figured the blade was going to be a whole lot faster than this busa we didn't understand just how much of a wet noodle suzuki made in this gen 3. and the crazy the the thing that blows my mind about this and why the result is so hard for me to swallow is because the bike feels fast while you ride it it feels fast it's got this big rush of torque and the needles go like up to the right. And well, you know what that sounds like, right? It sounds like Harley talk. It does sound like Harley talk. Ugh, like Harley talk for Busa, guys. We had a whole other outro film for this video. I'm not even kidding. We'll show you some clips right here. It's like we had a whole other video planned and we had to come back and redo this. Joe is on overtime now because we had to do this. This is crazy. <laughs> it's, it, it's literally shocking how much this is not the king of the road anymore. It's so not the king of the road. Kawasaki has completely come in and dusted up on this boost with the H2 platform. Any H2 bike will just destroy this motorcycle. Yep. Um, and Any Suzuki can bike. claim anything they want about the bottom end torque and mid-range punch. Yeah, it feels good and all that. But guys, this ain't it. You buy a $20,000 Hayabusa so that you leave everybody behind. We were talking Everybody about on a behind. group ride. Imagine if you bought this Busa and you went on a group ride with your buddies and a freaking naked bike was just like, do, 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 do. Yeah. Are you kidding me? You would never be able to live that down. You need no. to go find new friends because they, <laughs> they, would, they would not let you die without making fun of it over your grave. Yeah, I literally mean, they'd come dance on your grave being like, Busa slow, Busa slow, you know? <laughs> um, <laughs> But let's go take a look at the whiteboard. We've crunched a couple numbers so we can actually take a look at maybe a little bit of an elucidation of what happened today that made the Gen 3 just so pathetic. All right, folks, we had to crunch the numbers because we just couldn't believe the results we ran into today. And here's what happened. We took the Dragster 800RC because we wanted something comfortable to ride for the day and we thought it'd be fun to compare how fast the Busa was against normal motorcycles. But then the MV beat it all day, every day, everywhere. Yeah. And so we came back to the shop. You sound so sad. I am so sad. <laughs> so we came back to the shop and we crunched the numbers. And what happened was we vastly underestimated the MV Agusta, first of all. It makes 150 horsepower with our SC Project and Race ECU that's on it. That's a lot of power. That's like leader bike power from yep. like a couple years ago. It only weighs 380 pounds, which is pretty insane. So your power to weight here is 2.53, which is a lot. Um, that's pretty good. Uh, it's got 152 mile per hour top speed that's limited, but it's a naked bike. So your ergos and your aerodynamic are really working against you. Yep. Um, and the Hayabusa here is supposed to have these biblically large numbers, right? I mean, they are, this is almost double the foot pounds of the MV and yet, and it's got more pound per torque, but th this is the number that matters here. Yeah. You want this number lower. The power to weight figure here is just too high versus the MV over here at 2.53. And that's a 22% deficit over the Hayabusa over here. And that means it's going to be faster. And we saw that, which is crazy. Yeah. And again, to give you guys some context, the reason we didn't bring the fire blade is because if you crunch the numbers on the blade, it has a 2.06 pound per horsepower figure, which would, it would look like the Busa was standing still. There would be nothing for it. There would it. be nothing for it. And I just feel like if you're going to sell a $20,000 open class superbike that has the namesake Hayabusa, it can't, it can't do that. No. It can't do that. With, I mean, it kind of means that with these numbers, the way it is, Gen 3 boosts are dead. Boosts is dead, guys. It's sad to admit it, but I, I think it's true. I think if Suzuki had made a 250 horsepower factory turbo bike, something really just out of control, mm -hmm. this would be an entirely different conversation. Yes. You know, we'd be like, holy crap, that Busa lives up to the namesake. This is amazing. This bike's amazing. But they made a freaking wet noodle dad bike, man. It really is a dad. And the thing is, we, you wrote it in isolation and I wrote it in isolation. We loved it. And we loved it. It makes a great big splash with how much torque it has. It feels fast. But then you stop, it really stops feeling fast when your buddy rolls up next to you on a naked bike and you're full throttle next to him and he's leaving you behind. Yeah, you were, you were indignant, sad, many emotions were had. <sighs> yeah. It's hard, it's really hard to accept that that's what happened, but yeah. that's what happened. Guys, it's a brave new world. And uh, as we said earlier, the boost is dead. And with that being said, 
as we said in our original Gen 3 boost estimation video. The booster sucks. Gen 3 booster sucks. Gen 1 booster for life. You're releasing turbo that thing. You get real power out of it. <laughs> See you guys next time, I guess. Well, 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 my little squid, you've made it to the end of yet another Yammy Noob video. Thank you so much for watching. Just for you, got a little treat for you right over here. Brand new video for you. You can watch it, check it out. There's probably some squidding, some street riding, maybe some track riding. Maybe I'm bending my Ducati off-road. Who knows what's going on in that video? You should probably click on it and find out.